Hello and welcome to the final episode of my F123 Lamborghini My Team Career Mode. We've got three races in this video and we start off here in Brazil. This is the grid then ahead of the sprint race. So we are on pole alongside Jack Doohan. Then it's Piastri and Pierre Gasly, Joe and George Russell, Claire and Valtteri Bottas, Max and Albon, Sonoda and Teo Pacher, Lando and Liam Lawson, it's Enzo Fittipaldi and Esteban Ocon, Dennis Helga and Lance Stroll, Carlos Sainz and Nick De Vries. and on the final row of the grid is Logan Sargent and Kevin Magnussen. So we're here on the grid then ahead of the final sprint weekend of the career mode. We're starting up our position after we set an absolutely mega lap time in Brazil. Brazil has always been good to us in this career mode. We're going to be doing the soft strategy. Why would you want to touch the mediums in a sprint race? Here we go though. It's the five red lights ahead of the final sprint. And we are racing. We had a big tank stop with Oka Gaiva to cover off. Jack Dillon. Dillon though. It's nearly up the inside of us. As now we head down into the centre race as we leave the sprint race. It's all going on in the background. And that's an Alpine of Gasly trying to find a way through. But most importantly, we lead Jack Duino. He's going to try and go to the inside at turn four. He can't get further enough alongside. He's still going to go for it. Yes, the back out of it though. Can't find a way through there. As now as we go up the hill. And towards the end of lap one, we've kept him behind. And there's not really anywhere to get past there till we get back to the start. It's all the way on to lap four now because we started to pull away. See, we're about two seconds up the road. This is Pierre Gasly from a great qualifying position for the sprint as a puncher. And it's just like Jack Dillon in the Cota sprint race as a puncher. And it's the same here for Gasly. Has he made contact with someone or has the tyre just let go? If it's just let go, that's not good for Pirelli. As now, lap seven, the Ferrari engine is gone in that in the back of Charles Leclerc's car. He's pulling over to retire from the sprint here in Brazil. It's all over. It's bad for Gasly. It's extra bad for Charles Leclerc. They're both gone along Sunday. As now, this is Ocon right on the back of Lando Norris into turn one. He's spun round at turn one. I think that's two seasons running now he's done that. Everyone's flooding through. There's the horses, there's the Williams as well. As he goes back on the grass, there's importantly his teammate. This sprint race could not have gone any worse for Alpine. One driver has a puncher, the other one spins all on his own. But up front, no such issues for us as we round the final corner we are going to win the sprint by a big big margin nearly four seconds and that has put us in an unbelievable position to go and make this a fourth world title winning weekend so that's been then your brazil sprint you can see the results here it is a win for us and then Jack Doohan, and then Oscar Piastri, George Russell P4, and it's a good P5 for Albon there. Starting in P10 in the sprint, so getting good points for the team and him as well. Down at the back though, there was two DNFs, but Ocon. Down at the back, there was just the one DNF, that being Charles Leclerc. He's got a very, very long Sunday ahead of him. Come on a bit. So this is what it means for the Drivers' World Championship. So we don't even have to finish this race to be world champions. 66 points is a gap back to Oscar Piastri. Essentially, we have got to not finish and Piastri has to win this Grand Prix. So let's get into it then. We're on the grid. It's going to be a pretty simple, soft, to medium tyre strategy and in 36 laps time will we be a four time champion of the world here we go then the five red lights come on for the final Brazilian Grand Prix 
where they're out and we're on the way. But look at the start by Joe Bunyan. He's gone through the middle of about four cars there and he's gone up into P2. Jack Dewan, he's gone backwards once again, but we lead, and then it's a McLaren 2-3, the wrong McLaren though, he's up front, Oscar Piastri needs to find a way past his teammate, Joe's too far back to challenge us, into turn 4, and now can we just do what we did in the sprint, and just pull away, and not worry about what's going on behind, and leave the drama, all to them, this is Piastri though, putting pressure on his teammate down the inside can he get the job done yes he can he's passed his teammate and that was that tactical was he made to do that or has he done that off his own back but Piastri if we drop out he's doing everything he needs to do but we are seven and a half seconds up the road we were dominating this race no one could touch us as we come on to the end of lap 15 to make our one and only stop of the day. If everything goes to plan, we stop very before the line because we were carrying so much speed. As we trundle down the pit lane, we have a nice buffer to those behind us. So it does go wrong here. Hopefully it doesn't. We do have a buffer as the soft tires go off, the mediums go on. And That's we're underway once Perfect again. The can the they find us like a, a nice little gap we're happy to come out and You can see just goal. over the Don't barrier there's a car go. there. I think it is an Alfa Romeo. It's actually an Alfa Tauri. It's an Alfa Tauri and an Aston Martin. We're side by side with Dennis Halber just behind is Sir Lancelot. Down the inside we go. We can overtake that Dennis Halber. That was an important move. Now though, we're catching cars who are boxing, but it's going wheel to wheel with Enzo Fittipaldi. And I think we've got the job done. No, we haven't. That Alfa Romeo has good straight line speed, but he can't stick with us. And we keep it pinned and stay ahead. Going into turn one and past him now. It's now lap 17. This is Piastri. Doing, doing, jumped Piastri. Albon there you can see in the background as well so Piastri desperately needs to get the job done again on Piastri this is Teo Pacher lap 22 pulling over to retire from the Grand Prix Pacher has not had the season he had last season in terms of how good it's been this is Piastri though going at this is Joe in fact going at doing Piastri has overtaken doing can the other McLaren get past Joe's had a very disappointing season after he nearly won the opening race of the season he's been nowhere near Piastri since then down the inside though at turn four he gets past the Mercedes and that's actually helping us in the constructors as well because that is very tight but we're going to skip on all the way on to the final lap of the Grand Prix we have pulled an 18 second gap on those behind we are been cruise control and that has taken us to make us a four-time champion of the world oh man that's it it's all over and you are the world champion what a drive what a season well done it's certainly been an incredible year for Formula One, and our drivers have pushed themselves this season, making one of the most competitive years of racing in history. There can only be one champion, however, and here they are now, our new Formula One World Drivers Champion. So we've done it then. It's been a long time coming. Maybe it's been an easier route than it maybe would have been if Lewis Hamilton hadn't have decided to abandon mid-season and retire at the Dutch Grand Prix. The main thing is we've got the job done. Piastri did what he needed to do if we dropped out. We didn't, un unlucky for him. And then Albon, P5, finished where he started. Down at the back then, there was two retirements and a lot of cars lapsed. Table chair and Dennis Hauger. Drivers World Championship then and we have a 74 point lead in the Drivers World Championship. That is enough. We are world champions for the next two races now. The gloves are off and we can just go full beans. Piastri still second. George 
jumps Max Verstappen. Lewis Hamilton's finally been caught. They've all jumped him now after he was P2 for a long time after he retired in this career mode. And then down at the back, there's still your two drivers still at score in Logan Sargent and Kevin Magnussen. This is the constructors then, and this is heating up with just two races to go now. It's just six points in it between us and Mercedes. We have been closing, closing, closing all season, and it's looking like it's going to come to a climax in Abu Dhabi, but we shall see when we get there. But that's been the Brazilian Grand Prix. Let's go to Portimao. So we're here in Portimao then for the penultimate round of the season. It's a race where in the past we've always started last, but we've won them both times, once in the dry, once in the wet. But for once, we're starting at the front because this is the grid and we have put it on pole position alongside Jack Doohan for two races in a row now. Then it's Lando Norris and Dennis Halger, good for him, Bottas and Verstappen, Peter and Liam Lawson, Joe and Charles Leclerc, George Russell and Enzo Fittipaldi, Piastri and Esteban Ocon, Albon and Pierre Gasly, Sonoda and Lance Stroll, Sainz and Logan Sargent, and on the final row of the grid is both the horses headed by Nick DeFries. So we're here on the grid then, ahead of the Grand Prix. Finally, we're not at the back. This is our qualifying lap then. We set personal best in the first sector, purple in the middle sector, and then we set another personal best to get us to pole. So we're going to be starting on the softs, going to the mediums, your typical strategy, same one as every single race pretty much. But here we go then, this is the Portuguese Grand Prix, the five red lights are on, they're out, and we're racing. And we've got a fairly decent start, but Jack Doohan has him. Jack Doohan's been swamped as a great start by Lando Norris in his Ferrari. We've already pulled out a small gap going through the opening couple of corners. The snapping's all over the back of the Ferrari of Lando Norris. But Doohan's had another shocker. That's good for us in terms of the championship. But now what can happen as we go down into the second sector of the Grand Prix? So end the lap three now and... This is Jack Doohan, he's overtaken the Red Bull and now he's on the back of Lando Norris to retake P2 in the Grand Prix. We're two and a half seconds or thereabouts up the road, managing the pace, doing what we need to do, doing what a four-time world champion should be doing. As now, this is Verstappen, Bottas. Bottas has already retaken. He's getting past Lando Norris there. Verstappen was already through. And now lap 12, lap, lap 14, we are going to box for our one and only stop of the day. Been a pretty, pretty chilled race for us up front, managing the pace pretty much the same as Brazil as we trundle down the pit lane now. Very, very long pit lane here, very slow. We've timed it to perfection. The sus go off, the mediums go on, and okay, we're away. Perfect job from you and the crew there, mate. And now we can get racing once again. We can see Albon there is going longer, but they've found us a lovely gap to come out in of the pit crew. And we can just go on with our race. Lap 15, Dewan and Verstappen are both in. A long way back, so we're kind of undercutting them here a bit, which could help us in the long run. As there we are coming out, we're through turn one. And they're just exiting the pit, so we've gained about five seconds on them during the stops. And you can see the gap there. And then we just keep doing what we're doing. There we are going through turn one. This is Valtteri Bottas, and he's actually he's been jumped. Bottas has been jumped. I think he was only just in front of Verstappen, I think. But now lap 18, we've got the back of Piastri who is going longer, hasn't boxed, so we retake the lead of the Portuguese Grand Prix. Skipping on now to lap 30, this is Charles Leclerc slowly eating away at Joe Guan who already was, because two Grand Prix running. The Ferrari has let go on him in the sprint in Brazil. Here today, we skip on 
to lap 33 of 33, we have controlled this Portuguese Grand Prix. For once, it was a more simpler Portuguese Grand Prix compared to the past two years when we've had to fight back from last place. The only cars we were overtaking today were the ones we had to lap just in front of us. Seven and a half seconds is the gap to, to those behind to do in. But we're going to round the final corner. It's a hat trick of wins in Portimao. We win the Grand Prix. So we take the top step then here in Portimao three times in a row fastest lap as well doing did well to get back up into p2 after his horrible start for staff and getting on the podium as well albon not having the best of races that may hurt us a little bit but we've still got 26 points so we're carrying him in, in there a little bit george russell not having the best of races either down in eighth there was just a one retirement and then we only lapped a couple of cars one more lap we would have had those in front in terms of the drivers then the gap now is 98 points to Oscar Piastri. Albon I think has dropped a bit and Dewan's flying up as well he's nearly close now to Lewis Hamilton and it's the same two drivers who are still yet to score this season they've got one more race to try and get a point that being Logan Sargent and Kevin Magnussen. So the constructors then we will have for the final race of the career mode a constructors title decider two points the gap to Mercedes is effectively who finishes in front of the other who takes the constructors world championship can it be third time lucky for us every year pretty much we've taken it to Mercedes and every year we've failed will this be the year let's find out so this is it then we've had heartbreak we've had glory we've had everything in between and this is it the final race of my F1 23 Lamborghini career mode. It all comes down to this. One more race. Can we win the Constructors World Championship? We're going to be doing a fairly easy one stopper, starting on the softs, going to the mediums. We're starting further back because we've had to take a new engine. And this is our qualifying lap. It was good enough to get quite far up. We actually mistimed the final run. So this is our one and lap. So this is it then, the final round of the career mode. And it's all very like all the lights, but we are racing here in Abu Dhabi. We've got a good start. We already gained a few positions. Now we're going to try and go around the outside at turn one. He's gained a couple of places there. Still now the kinks of the first couple of corners. We gained quite a few places as we head now towards the old hairpin where there weren't a controversial move once upon a time as we gained two, two places there and we're having a good start so far we're getting closer and closer to the back of Mercedes of Jack Doohan this has to be, we have to go, we have to overtake him if we want to be Constructors World Champions so here we go then, so towards the end of lap two, we're all over the back of Jack Dewan and the Mercedes. We're going to go to the inside, both taking job done there. That was a much needed move. And now, can we gain on the car and go forward? We have to. Alcorn is in a good position so far, P2. We've got to join him there if we want to win the Constructors World Championship. In front of us now, though, is Dewan trying to come back at us. It's good point to get right past. The Ferrari of London Norris. Look, do you still there? But he has to really not be able to take us here. He said he's our in the stronger position, of course, as we hold it around the outside. And we're also going to run around the outside and we're covering the car. We catch the actually nothing. And now, can we get after? After the Ferrari of London Norris, as we go into the bank corner. There used to be a very good chicane around there at one point. He's overtaking the Ferrari as well, but Lando's not having that, he's coming back at us in, in his Ferrari. He's going to try and do the up and under though, if he captures nothing, then he's done it. Fair play Lando. 
you can get there at two hour and you can see there we're going to be side by side with really push the Ferrari right to the inside of Lando Norris he's still there though as in the background doing as I'll go around the outside of the entry we keep the Ferrari behind Lando gets us on the exit I think Lando may have actually got us there no we haven't he has stayed behind us just we're still side by side we're going to have to keep it in the outside Lando though is out of it and he's going to be out as this is Carlos Sainz, it is Williams, and I feel quite bad for him because that Williams is an absolute dog. And of course we did drop him mid-season for Albon, but look what Albon's been doing in his car. It's, it's come to the end of it, 12, Dylan follow, follows us in, Lando and Piastri both stay out, but they are on a different compound tyre, they are going longer than this car crew. Quite a queue behind us as well, there's a bit of a trolley train before we got into the pits as we go down now. The soft car and the mediums are on. And we can finish the final stint of this grow mode quite nicely. And now we need to get half of those in front. Doing now, we've pulled a bit of a gap through the pit lane. Now can we pull away? We've come out in a nice little gap. Nothing in front or behind us. Is the one lap, a couple laps later, George Russell from the lead has gone longer and the gap was around 10 seconds and by the time George Russell comes out we've got the gap down to around 6 and he's come out in traffic. One lap later, this is Albon Hart, interesting, coming out and the gap went to him was around 5 seconds and now we find ourselves only just behind him on the medium so I don't our tyres are going to quicker, they're not going to last as long as these cards, so really, we need to get the job done and try and catch Alex here. As it, as it currently stands, even if we overtake Piastri, Piastri here, as we do down the inside, job done, going to squeeze him a bit. So with George Russell winning, Albon P2, we are P3, he's caught the back now of Albon, we're going to go past him. Go round the outside, get the job done on him, and let's see if we've got a pace to catch George Russell. We have to catch him if we want to win the Constructors World Championship. Because as it stands, this going to Mercedes, we have to win this Grand Prix as things stand. As Albon tried to get back up the inside of us, I thought we had the pace to catch George. We work, we work slowly catching George, but Albon won't be very helpful in this race. He was all over the back of us and we actually started to lose time to the Mercedes. So I decided coming out of the final corner, let's do the Mexican strategy. Because we back off a lot and forth because obviously we were just coming back into doing. So we will be losing time and losing time. We were in a losing situation, we were losing attack into George. So it's the final lap then off the career mode. We need a miracle now if we want to be constructed as champions, champions. George Russell leading, we're falling back into doing, we've been using Alpine's DRS to full effect to keep us ahead of doing. But as we skip on then to the final corner, George Russell is going to make it three in a row in Abu Dhabi and win Mercedes the Constructors World Championship. And we are going to complain for P3, Alpine P2, and it's a good final. So that's been your Abu Dhabi and final Grand Prix of the career mode. George Russell wins, we have P3, Alex Albon, P2, great race for Alex and us, but just not enough to be world champions, constructors world champions. Unfortunately, we're doing finishing P4. And then down at the back, there was two DNFs, Carlos Sainz and Max Verstappen, and Nick De Vries was lapped. So this is the final Drivers World Championship then. We are World Champions by 106 points over George Russell. He has taken P2 on the final race of the season ahead of Oscar Piastri. Then it was Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton still finishing P5 just in front of his replacement Jack Dillon. If you're interested to know, Hamilton would have won the championship if we had Dillon's points to his. No. He would have won the championship by 48 points 
not 106 so it would have been close and then as we've been saying all season there was two drivers who never scored a point that being Logan Sargent and Kevin Magnussen so this is the final constructors then Mercedes will win the constructors by five single points yes that's a tough one to take it was a good constructors championship fight over the course of the season and then it was just Williams who never scored a point this is all the results then of the season for everyone you can see there we got a lot of fastest laps along the way as well didn't realize that at the time you have the win for Liam Lawson right at the start of the season in the first race and then tailed off still got paid in though in Monza and this is the bottom half you can see the results of Sargent and Magnussen and how they didn't pick up a point this season this is the final stats then of our career mode we are a four-time champion of the world we never won the constructors we came close 37 pole positions 29 race wins we completed 2611 laps 32 fastest laps 1136 points but the main thing is for me thank you so much for watching this season this career mode I've, this has been my favourite career mode I've done since I've been doing YouTube. If you've been here since the very start, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this Lamborghini career mode and I'll see you on F1 24. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.